<laughs> I'll tell you when it's. Okay, it says uh, in broadcast at the top. That must mean we have a broadcast to end. We are live. <laughs> yeah. So I have been gone. I've gone on an Amazon live. spree yeah. lately. Oh, hang on. My. Sorry, my uh, right. TV was, I had to mute it. Okay. I picked this book up. It came in the mail yesterday. I did not look at it until today. I came home and was busy drawing. Uh-huh. And and called the Hollywood Western, 90 years of cowboys, Indians, train robbers, sheriffs, and gunslingers, and assorted heroes and desperados. And I got it, and I looked at it, and it came kind of wrapped in a shrink wrap thing. And I thought, boy, that looks like it's in good shape. Very happy. I opened it up right before while I was waiting for you to come on, and I'm flipping through. And first uh-huh. thing I see, somewhere in here, somebody's cut out. Oh, right there. Right. Somebody's cut out a picture. Or, <laughs> they like that something. picture. Something. Well, it was, I, you know, some dumb artist put that on his autograph. Probably, and and they even went into the page <laughs> behind it. Uh huh. And I'm like, uh, and then I find a, there are pages missing. Oh, several God. and it's like dang it i wanted that I book. Wanted this, this has been on my wish list forever and it's not hard to find i didn't get a great deal on it i got it for about half cover price but i was just excited to get it there's another missing page damn well i tell you what uh <laughs> i shouldn't name him uh but i uh, we had an illustrator that Unlike all the rest of us at, at the studio, that uh, the studio I told you about in San Diego with all of us that uh, yeah. were doing comic books. We had another guy that was a guy that uh, more often did uh, stuff for, you know, card companies, role playing stuff and all that. Yeah. And he did yeah. really nice watercolors and all that. But he was totally dependent on reference. He wasn't a, he wasn't a comic book guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, as part of the uh, the group uh, gestalt or whatever of the place, I had brought a whole bunch of magazines. We had them in a, a nice, pretty nice magazine rack. <laughs> and he had uh, several times got in there with scissors and and uh, and uh, trimmed them, trimmed liberated what he them. liberated what he wanted out of uh, my my magazines. Oh it was all gosh. right, though. It yeah, was, magazines I don't are a care. little bit different than yeah. books. Anyway, I've already filled out the return. That's going back. That's unacceptable. Oh, yeah, the, yeah sure, if, sure. I mean, it looked it like was it was rare or something. If it was missing that one picture, maybe I mm-hmm. might be able to live with it. Anyway, I have till the end of August, so I may read it, but send it. I got another book, um, the Star Wars Original Trilogy Storyboards. Perfect shape. A yeah. Deal on it. It was sent to me in a plastic bag, no box. It got a ding in the spine, and it has like half an inch gouge in the spine, and that's going back too because it's like, look. Even though it's know, rare, huh? You, you're no, not, no, no, you're it's not, not. No, 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 it's not rare. It's not okay. rare. It's still in print, but I, I, I got it for a pretty good deal. But it's just like, you know what? And I have till mid-August to send it back. I'll, I'll read it between now and then and decide if I want a copy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I think I got it from Half Price Books, so I think they're going to charge me shipping, which annoys me, or won't mm-hmm. refund my shipping because it's their fault it's broken. It, it's unusable. I should have had them ship me another one, and then, they, uh, then I wouldn't be out the shipping. But anyway, I got these two books. I'm totally happy with oh akira the complete works wow this cool. is uh, this is the story this is volume one and two this is the storyboards for the whole thing look at that art Dang. Man. i and it's tell you all there, there, Otomo. yeah that that guy is uh, just amazing what he does for boards i've got uh well, did he do Nashika? I think I'm. I think no, of the right that's, guy. No, that's, that's a different guy. No, different guy. That's the Studio Ghibli guy. Okay. But uh, this this book, it, this is a reprint. There was an original. There, there was one of these that came out before. Those two volumes set, and it's been out of print, and they go for big bucks. But it, it's got this plastic kind of cover on it. But I mean, this is. I mean, I'm very well and. 
by the way, these are about 60 bucks a piece. So, I mean, this was not a cheap purchase. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like, man, how often do you get to see Kashiro Otomo's pencils? His original stuff. His yeah. original stuff like this. You see, but I mean, and I love Akira. I love the manga. I love oh, yeah. the movie. It's one, it's a really a great film. In the general. Uh, Akira. So I don't. I'm I'm sure I've told you. Maybe maybe I haven't. Akira. Uh, when I was in art school, our friend, uh, you know, do you know Mike Kennedy? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I thought you did. Mike Kennedy uh, yeah. was, my, was my instructor, and he showed us a, a VHS. That's how long ago it was. It was back in yeah. the late 80s. Yeah, and I had VHS that VHS, tape. I'm sure. Well, his was a bootleg that somebody had brought because he, he ran a comic shop. Mm -hmm. And somebody had brought a copy in of a, it was a Japanese, it was unsubbed, undubbed, and, right. shook, you know, and it's just like, holy cow. I mean, you know, the us, you know, had never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. It just blew us away. Yeah. And I begged him, and he, he made me a copy of it. He's like, dude, I got to have a copy of this. Actually, I missed it when they showed it to the class, and so he gave me a copy of it. I was out for whatever reason. I think I would gone to my grandfather's funeral, maybe mm. anyway. And so I've, you know, and I've bought Akira and several, I think I had a, I think I had the VHS copy and I think I had the, I had like a, a DVD, like a limited edition steel box kind of DVD thing mm -hmm. that had a bunch of extra stuff in it. And then I had the, then the, I think recently I got the remastered Blu-ray Sorry, Dan, I didn't notice you there. I don't know how long you've been there. I've been uh, drawing and uh, tracing up and uh, doing stuff like that. Oh, yeah, that. Dan, Dan said he's going to be on the show tonight. Okay. I, I'll be here. That Akira you know. book looks great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I tell you, what's what's sad is I was looking at it last night, um, and I just I just felt immediately inadequate. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, oh yeah. gosh. No, you can't look yeah. at something like so, that. that so, uh, somebody sorry. that... It's just a, yeah. uh, a phenom and his brain and everything like yeah, that. Sorry, Dan. I'm not Akira Show. <sighs> yeah. There's only one. Oh, yeah. Uh, you but know what? You know what I get from it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to uh, lay out there and uh, inspire yourself. God, with. Yeah, yeah. The action. It's just like, oh, my gosh. I need to add like a million times more gesture to my stuff. Okay. Anyway, you get you were getting ready to say, you know what? <laughs> well, I, I told you that last week where I lost my train of thought, you know, right in the middle of saying I was going to make a point. Yeah. What's hilarious is that I, I told you I was about to start to make this big point that I lost. And I said, uh, oh, wait a second. I'm interrupting you. Why don't you go ahead and say whatever you were going to say? <laughs> And so yeah. my memory of that moment is I let you go ahead and, and say what you were going to say. If you rewatch the stupid show, I give you about two seconds before something you're saying makes me think of something else. <laughs> and I just interrupt you and, and go on a track there. <laughs> and, and so it's like I lost that train of thought. And all I was going to say uh He's a huge fan of Scott Sackett. I think that guy's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind uh, of him. Uh, but, uh, and it was so funny when I listened to it myself. It's like, my God, gets in, literally the thought was, listen to yourself. You just said, let the guy make his points before you get blabbermouthed again. And then you, uh, and then you said something that excited you and you uh, had to make your point all uh, in the big middle of him. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> I, I, I can send you the link, I think, for the exact moment it happens. It's pretty funny. Um, you know what? I, 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 uh, I don't know. I deal with all <laughs> kinds of people. I deal with all kinds of people like every day. And some people are very, uh, very full of social graces. And some, <laughs> some people are not. And I just, it just rolls over me. I, you know, well, I it didn't even occur to me I was doing it. I, uh, I just, uh, just did it. 
Oh, yeah, and you know what? The stupid idea I lost, it occurred to me later, the only thing I was going to make a point of is something we talk about all the time is the 10,000 hours. It's like you just have to boil out all your bad drawings by, uh, you know, you just have to have a lot of drawing just like that. Otomo, that's what you're looking at. That's a guy that uh, has... Oh, gosh. He, he's yeah. gone dusk to dawn many, many a day doing nothing but drawing. And uh, 10,000 hours is a joke to even talk about that as his, his uh, you know, crucible of how he got good. He's, he's done a lot more hours than that. Yeah. Well, and and the thing is, is it, I mean, and the, the people, the fact that people have embraced AI art or certain in certain quarters tells mm -hmm. you that people don't want to do the hard work. And I yeah. mean, yeah. It, and the thing is, is man, it's the, to me. There's no. I I have I have decided that as an artist, you if if you if you become an artist, you're saying. I am committing my life to the study of this craft. Mm -hmm. And if, and I feel like if you're honest and I, you don't have to be a fine artist, even if you just, you know, draw comics or whatever. I mean, in reality, you're like, I, as an, to me, part of being a, a, an artist is just this idea of I'm committing to constantly getting better. Hey, you know? uh, Scott, Dan's got some notes for you here. Did you get the revisions I sent today for the tomorrow girl story? Also, and then you get got to deal with me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I uh, I did get uh, this. I haven't read it. I assumed it was what we had talked about uh, about the snow ending on the thing. I think he changed the dialogue. Uh, I, I don't know if that, I I just hadn't had a chance to read it yet. Okay, but so you got but it. you got them. No, okay. I got them. I got them. I have read them. Um, it's you know. Yeah. Today it's, was hectic. Oh, it was. <laughs> oh, every day's hectic. It's, uh, I've got, uh, uh, yeah, I've got people, I deal with people fighting and all kinds of crap. Hmm. Oh, know. well, oh, yeah, yeah, that, uh, yeah, work is all, I tell you, I, uh, I, I wandered in and made some poor kid. He, his, he's, he's at the age where he just takes it all in stride. I don't know. It may have scarred him. Uh, I was at a Brahms the other day. Oh, wait a second. Let me add uh, some Dan notes here. Yeah, only changes were dialogue and captions. Okay. And yes, I got, I, I and got I that. added okay. And I added two extra pages. So you need to know that. Oh, God. I hope he's kidding. No, no. Oh, no, oh, no. He says two, two, two page splash page. Is that cool? There you uh, go. Now you've got another challenge. Oh, uh, geez. I, you know what's sad is, uh, and I mean, don't get me wrong, this is page four, <laughs> so I'm halfway done. But he, but he wants them August first. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's doable. I okay. mean, good. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding you. I'm kidding you. You're kidding me, or he's kidding me? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, yeah, I'm kidding you. That I'm uh, saying oh, that's well, it. that'll be easy. That'll no, be he easy. says, he says, I kid, I kid. He did. Oh, say, okay. I, I see, am I, joking. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Well, here's here's what he doesn't know is I got an email today from somebody. So at church they're having uh, vacation Bible school this week or next week. Uh -huh. And I originally had thought about volunteering. Well, you ain't then, the time, then, huh? Well, I don't, I don't have the time now, which is fine, you know. But so and, and that was kind of my thing. It's like, well, if I don't have anything pressing, I'll I'll volunteer, which I had not volunteered, so they. They were not expecting me mm -hmm. wisely, um, but I thought it'd be nice. Well, then this came up. Well, I have volunteered to do uh, a set or a, we're building a rocket. <laughs> we're building a rocket. And a so, rocket. yeah, well, the, it's like a space theme. And uh, so... Uh, the guy, the guy that I normally build sets with, which is something I really enjoy doing, but God, it always comes at the wrong time. He got all the pieces today and was like, 
hey, what are you doing tonight? And I'm like, oh, I can't do it tonight. I'll do it tomorrow because I work half a day on Friday. I mm-hmm. should call in tomorrow because I've got a ton of time this week. I don't think I have my 40 yet, but it's just, I don't know. I just hate missing work because you have to catch up, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, sure. No, I, I know what you mean. It's like, uh, don't don't interrupt my uh, my my routine. My uh, my need to satisfy the uh, the X. <laughs> I'm just kidding. the X. Get the X going. Yes. Yeah. Which Ellis is not talking about an ex-wife. He's talking about the X on his calendar. Yeah, just to yeah. clarify for everyone that thinks you may have an ex-wife. I'm working on my X right now. I decided to work it into the uh, evening so that uh, I'm not really wasting. Uh, time i'm getting something done yes well i'm gonna i'm gonna change the routine a little bit i'm trying to get she's supposed to be smacking her hand into her fist i guess this is what i'm going for yeah the, working uh, out yeah that's that's how animators do things they they walk it out they uh they act it they act what they need to have on a page it's funny how, you know, it's it's like anything. And you discover this with the uh, grappling arts, too. The grappling that, uh, arts. <laughs> the, 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 well, wrestling and all that, I'm sure. Yes. That uh, your brain really sees and re And it's probably true for karate and other things, too. But I think it's especially true of stuff where you've got a hold of somebody. Uh, you you see these things and visualize them so well because it's uh, it involves your body in space and you know where every part of your body was and what you needed to have done and what what should have been going on <laughs> that you weren't able to pull off and you and you replay these moves in your head and it's pretty cool how that works uh, i agree <laughs> I don't know if karate's like that. I don't remember karate that well. I just remember uh, all the times I got my breath knocked out. Oh, gosh. It's, it's the rough. worst. Yeah, it's it's rough. It takes a little bit of, give me some time here. Go on YouTube and look up skating skating fails. Oh, yeah. And you'll find tons of videos oh, yeah. of... of Running yeah. themselves, racking themselves all the time. Oh, yeah, or getting the breath knocked out of themselves. Yep. Oh, yeah, those guys are racking themselves all the time. Mo- I don't got that motion right. Something about that doesn't look right to me. See, Atomo screwed me up. <laughs> That's all you have to do is look it up. Or, like, I took this picture, this, uh, this very crude picture, but very easy to use reference. I used the Vado and then did a frame grab from it. And I'm probably getting a little elaborate with it. And I've kind of lost, what do, you, what do you call it? Lost the thread on it gesture, a little bit. Gesture. Yeah. yeah. Because I've, I've let the uh, I let the ref push me around a little bit. But uh, oops. Yeah, I just now noticed one thing I did really wrong. That's all right. I decided an upshot was called for. Try to get some variety in this thing. Oh yeah, which, which is tough. It's uh, um, the guy that used to do the SpongeBob storyboard, Sherm Cohen. Oh, I better check on Dan here. Oh yeah, Dan may be telling me I'm doing it wrong. With that punch, with fist punch and palm. This punch and palm. Think about how Burt Ward did his on Batman. Yeah. Gosh. I don't know what that gesture was like. Gosh, Batman. It was just was, like Oh, that. it was like this. Yeah. Gosh. No, I don't Batman. know. Was it more knuckles in the, in the, was it more like this? Yeah, it may have been. Yeah. I think it was more knuckles. Yeah. You're right. Okay. 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 I got that. Okay. Thanks, Dan. I'll erase it all now. <laughs> No, that, that makes it a little more dynamic. Actually, yeah, hang on. I don't, she's too small. What's that, uh, what's the old uh, measure, measure twice? 
Yeah. Well, you know, hang on. I need to look at the script. Make sure it's not too much dialogue. Yeah. I don't turn it into a good drawing. Just have to take my word for it. <laughs> Got him a little. The deal is I haven't sold upshot enough, but that's all right. I think I can push it around, get it right. Oh, you know what? I've been listening, watching uh, past few evenings, uh, a 13 hour Wes Anderson promoting uh, something by walking around in a French. I'm sending you a video of it via Facebook. Okay. Uh, so he uh, said, he okay. said, he's sending you ref. So, um, he says, I can't see it because my phone's on. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, you're using his phone. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. I'll have to wing it. I think I'm, I think I know what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, what are you watching? Uh, so I'm watching. Uh, Wes Anderson was in this. I've seen several uh filmmakers in this French uh video store before walking around picking up their favorite films you know and telling you all about them <clears throat> so it's a pretty cool program and he walks around and uh picks up this documentary and you know the the people the the big fans that own the thing say why why did you pick a big uh regular mainstream documentary like this and he explained it and it seemed like good reasoning to me that it was something you know it's 13 hours worth of stuff on silent films very exhaustive and the value is that it talks to all these people that you couldn't have talked to them if you'd waited another five years because they were all going to die and it, it is really cool to look at all these people that are talking about that era and when you think about it you know, Gloria Swanson, who we saw in um, Classic Cinema Podcast on that Sunset beautiful, Boulevard. beautiful movie. And uh, it was so such a great movie. Maybe one the best. My, one of my favorites. Maybe the best movie we watched uh, during that time. Mm. It's hard to say. We saw an awful it lot was, of good movies. It was, my, it was my pick, so it could be. Yeah, yeah that's a good <laughs> <Okay>. one. <laughs> Holy time delay, Batman. Yep. That was from Dan. Uh, but yeah. yeah, but just think, Gloria Swanson from then until she was a silent film, you know, heroine all the way back. So she spanned it. When she's making those references to DeMille, this is a real deal. She she actually was an actress for DeMille. Yeah. And that was DeMille in the film. And yeah. they are they are literally being self-referential throughout uh Hollywood Boulevard, which is cool. Sunset I mean, Boulevard. Su Sunset Boulevard, yeah. Yeah, that well, that's the thing is it's like this is and uh, my understanding is when it was filmed and cast and everything, there was kind of this reaction like is she going to do that? That's, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like uh, uh she's kind of like saying, yeah, the has been time has arrived. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's like, well, no, you know, it's uh, for one thing, it was just a fantastic script. No, oh, yeah, yeah, that that movie is awesome. I could watch yeah. it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's just yeah. okay. It's character driven. It's that's all you got to know is that these are uh, this is a great character that uh, that guy that lets himself be drawn into that, you know. And yeah. oh yeah, and you watch that documentary, and who else is in there? Eric von Stroheim. Uh, so, he's in that. Uh, he's all the over. Driver. Oh yeah, the driver, he's, right? Yeah. He's all over that and damn documentary. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Well, that, I mean, that was the thing. Is yeah, it, it had. He, you know, he was a great one of the greats. And it's interesting him. Oh my God, I see why he. Why people noticed him? He was pure evil. He was grabbing kids that obviously weren't little dummies. They were children, and he they gave him a grip where he could pick a child one arm, shake it, and throw That's it out nice. a window. You That's know, and I guess they had some sort of little kid that was like 
they could rehearse doing that or something, but it was one of the most horrific things I've ever seen. And, uh, you know, it was uh, and all in the cause of like raping the mother. It's like, my gosh, what were they doing back in the silent era? Oh, the silent. That, well, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the deal. They had it's, to have the Hayes Code come in. Right. Well, and even, even before, well, the, you know, the silent era, when they went, to the talkies they lost a lot because they had to adapt for sound Uh and and all of a sudden these movies that had evolved to this point all of a sudden it became very very uh stage bound and you know the camera was they couldn't move the camera because the the cameras were heavy anyway but they were noisy Uh and so they had to be real careful about all that stuff yes yes yeah, you know, and it it, it makes it's a very good documentary, and you can watch it on YouTube. I sent you guys the link. You sent the link, man. Yeah, it's yeah. It, I need if to watch you ever that. feel like you've got thirteen hours, <laughs> no, I'm I'm only on number four. Uh, you know, but it, very interesting, very interesting stuff, and of course, it's just fascinating to think about the leaps that were made, the leaps of faith. It's like. Beforehand, it was like paper mache and shot in a room. And it's like, who who makes this big Cecil B. DeMille like leap of, you know, I guess the money starts to pour in and they say to themselves, you know what? We need some we, biblical epics. <laughs> we, can, we can spend an awful lot of money on these things if we choose to. By golly, they went to work doing it, and they got a return for doing it. Yeah. It's like, but you've got to decide. You know, at, at some point, there's that break point where they decided we can spend a lot of money. We can afford to take a gamble. Yep, and they did, and it paid and, off for. And them. all of a sudden, Hollywood ruled the ruled the roost on that stuff. Oh, there you went. Yeah, it looked, like, it looked like you glitched for a second. I heard something funny, like somebody glitched. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if it's. I assumed it was you. No, oh, okay. No, I'm. I'm still here. I saw you go black, though. Oh, I did. Yeah, for just a little bit. Maybe I got a message. Yeah, that's probably what happened. It was Dan Not sent bad. me a Facebook message. Probably, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so so how are you? How are you holding up in this heat, Ellis? Well, you know, this heat is uh, something I've got it set for 79 degrees, so my uh, my valuable air conditioner doesn't get killed by it. So um, yeah. I, I want the air conditioner to at least chunk out a little change from what's outdoors. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good panel. I can I can call that enough of an angle change that, it, oh, I'm, I'm looking at it for myself. <laughs> Share that with uh, my audience, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let's see what else Dan has said. I am big. It's the picture that got small. Yes, that's yes, right. Yes, I'm still big. It's the pictures that got small. And that's yeah, right. Swanson. Oh yeah, that that's a great movie. I like that movie a lot. Yeah, yeah, like you say it. It wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. Somebody said, we're going to watch this tonight. Yeah. That's, you know, and what's funny, we talk about this uh, with my my, my coworkers at work. We talk about this, this idea that uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, when you think about back to the era, like the video store and you go to the store and your choice is really pretty limited. And you know, now we have so much at our at our hands. And we there's I I think the I think streaming is going to kill, in the long run, a lot of classic movies because people just aren't going to watch them anymore. I get well, you know, and I'm I'm the same way. I can only take uh, so much of it. You know, I'm I'm watching this all along. It's got James Mason is uh, narrating it. And I'll put the link, by the way, anybody that uh, in our little links. Yeah, uh, Dan says Carol Burnett loved the movie, obviously too. Yeah, yeah. Her, her and Harvey Corman. Yeah, they got up to some high jinks with that. 
obviously, you know, you're uh, an actor. Uh, you you know that movie. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I was watching a man from uncle last night. I got to look at that particular man from uncle up. It's got this one actor in it. I'll, I'll, I'll do this as a parallel thing. Uh, uh, I, I see him, I see his old wet lips and I see him doing something villainous. And he's an actor, you know, I think he was in Andy Griffith several times. It was some season three and he's playing this evil guy. But of course, I, when I'm looking at him, I'm thinking, now what do I know him most? Yeah, well, how do I know this guy? Yeah. So I've got to find that out. I'll tell you in a moment who he is and what all he did. But there was also a real cute girl in it, and I want to look her up too. But I think I know who she is. She was one of the uh, Petticoat Junction good looking girls. Oh, yeah. And come down. never got into Petticoat Junction as a kid. No, I didn't either, really. I uh, could I tolerate just, I, love, I love the theme song. There's old Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. I uh, I got into uh, Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> yeah. Got into um, uh, kind of didn't really like Andy Griffith as much as a kid necessarily, but I did oh, watch Andy go. Griffith during the pandemic. Um, and enjoyed it. Green Acres I could take a little bit, but I found it even as a kid I found it a little ridiculous though. But I never got to Petticoat Junction. Okay, the actor's name is Robert M. Hart. And oh he's oh, he's just all over TV. <clears throat> he was in uh, Andy Griffith as uh, Malcolm Tucker. I don't I don't know. I don't know that character. Yeah. But I mean I must be a But I but I'm gonna to try to find the, the thing where I know he played this evil guy and all you can think of is the way his hooded eyes looked and his wet lips and he did something really evil and I, I've gotta find him here. Something that made an impression. Young Ellis was yeah flabbergasted S at the audacity. Sick sickened. And I said, that guy. I haven't found it yet. <laughs> Man from Uncle. The Invaders. He was in The Invaders. Of course, that's from that what time. Was, what was The Invaders? I'd never seen The Invaders. What was it what? about? I've got the, I think I've got the DVDs. I ought to loan them to you. They're what fun. Tell, They're tell, me what it, tell me what it is. This very tired guy with some sort of route stops and he sees the fact that aliens are real, real, and they, for whatever reason, decide he's, he's worth pursuing and canceling. But he's always just a half step ahead of him, and so that's it. It's basically the fugitive, and it's by the same company that did the fugitive and the FBI and all that. What, what were they called? Uh, Oh, heck. Can't think of the big company name. I'm still looking for this other guy. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I got you distracted. Uh, I had seen Invaders. So Invaders is like like the Prisoner or the the uh, Avengers TV show, the British TV show. No, it's, it's very that I, well, No, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's stuff that I knew about from going to conventions because I would see, you know, posters and novel, but I never saw them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not comparing the shows. I'm just saying I, my knowledge of them, I'm comparing like white dwarf i've never seen white dwarf but i always saw kinds yeah. of ads for white or stuff you know for white dwarf at cons mm -hmm. so you're starting to say it's different than the avengers or because it's yeah. slicker it's slicker is that what you were going to say well it's very of its time the tv producers that uh 
The Invaders with uh, Roy somebody. Let me, uh, Schneider. Schneider. No. Classic TV, The Invaders, created by, oh, how about that? I knew that, too. Roy Thinnis was uh, the uh, star. And the guy who, uh, I guess, the whole thing was King Cohen, Larry Conan. Cohen came up with The Invaders. Oh, you know, really? Like, the yes. movie The movie director? The uh, TV series, yes, yes. The guy that you associate with... Uh, God, what's he done? Uh, it's alive and uh, cue yeah. the wing serpent. That's, and yeah, that's God told me to. And see, the invaders was known for the aliens. If you managed to snuff them, you know, with a shot or something, they uh, turned bright red and turned into vapor, and uh, which was always a cool. You had to have that at least once in the show. Hmm. But it was a Quinn Martin production. Finally thought of that name. I've heard only 10 million times. Yeah, it's a Quinn Martin production, which did the FBI and so many other things back then. So it looked, you know, you know, you could you could tell the production quality and look of a show just by, you know, the teams they thrust at it. And so, yeah, it looked like one of those. Gotcha. Explore more of the trivia on that show. God, doggone it. I couldn't find a specific one. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 yeah, it's I'm, riveting. I, I, there, I there, there might be all sorts of things. Let me see what all Dan has said. Okay, here we go. He may know all about the invaders. Oh, yeah. He was in Man in a Hurry episode of Randy Griffith about the businessman. Yeah, yeah, very, you're, very you're right. right. He gets stuck on Mayberry on a slow Sunday and is trying to be on his way. I remember that episode. A QM production, yes. Invaders only lasted a couple seasons. Yeah, it's probably a substitute, so I don't think it was syndicated as much. Me TV has it on Sunday mornings. Yeah, I've got the DVD, and uh, I found them. As good as I remembered them, they were they were compelling. They were fun to watch. Okay, now I got to. Not that I watch. But I watch something on YouTube that is. Yeah, you could probably probably watch them all. Janine Riley is known for Electra Glide and Blue. I guess she was Robert Blake's uh, girlfriend in that. And yes, she was Billy Joe Bradley in Petticoat Junction. Very cute, very cute, and I guess had a pretty good career. Sure. As a bombshell. As one <laughs> as one will. Yeah. Bombshells are got a certain amount of time they last and we should all be thankful um, for them while they're here. I don't know. Some of them look pretty good even in their after their prime. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean I was thinking about Madonna, you know, she uh Yeah she, she's she's lasted past her expiration and she shouldn't worry about it she made a mark yeah, yeah. The, fugitive, the fugitive is still probably the best show it's probably the best concept that was written by a guy that's famous for his concepts he was he did like cheyenne and uh i forget his name they have a bunch of interviews with him he's a pretty fascinating guy he did some of your favorite tv and i can't think of his name Some of my favorite TV, specifically, eh? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. No, no, no. You'd know his. I'll look him up because he's uh, one of those guys. I'll just look up Cheyenne because I know he probably was the guy you know, light on that. And let me say, Me TV is like a national treasure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, Cheyenne TV series. Which I learned was uh, probably about the first thing to turn one hour. We had this discussion about Tate that, uh, you know, and I think he's wrong and I hate to tell Barry he's wrong, <laughs> but he was, yeah. sure, I, he was sure those uh, shows were one hour cut down to a half hour Tate about the one arm bounty hunter. Oh, and yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> 
I think they were half hours. I'll let you Always tell me Always meant wrong. to be. No, I'm not going to tell him he's wrong. I don't want to argue. That, that's a, that's a, that's a, that would be a good thing to discuss with Barry. Yeah, yeah. Not worth, not worth uh, dying on that hill for. No. Series writing credits. I ought to put him at the top because I know he was. Uh, Roy Huggins. Yes, Roy Huggins was the name of the guy. And he came up with lots of ideas. I think he got. Uh, oh, he came. Yeah, he came up with the uh, the fugitive. He came up with Run for Your Life. Yeah, which is, uh, I guess, didn't make enough shows. He came up with the Rockford Files. That's the thing. Oh, I mean, I, there you go. I, t I told you he did some of your favorite things. He did Maverick. The future. I have, yeah. I have often on been Amateur. watching Rockford Files on uh, Amazon Prime. I, I love. There's something about the Rockford Files very appealing. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's James Garner was. Uh, yeah, and Maverick, Roy Huggins. Yes, yes, you're right. Roy Huggins. You, yeah, he, he found it before I did. I'm searching around for it. Uh. Yeah, I've scattered myself today. I've only got one drawing done. That's all right. I got an important drawing well, I, done. I was going to say, did you get an X? No, I get an X for that drawing. Because, Yay. Uh, that's all I that's, that's all that's important. Mm -hmm. Is that Ellis fulfills I, I, that? I still, I still have to do some writing tonight to get the X, but that's all right. Oh, I you do? do it. Yeah, what writing you all. So what did you do today? Did you walk in the morning? Uh, or if you want to call it the morning, I was probably 1230 before I got around to Jeez. To it, nope, so it was that plenty is not, hot. That that is not in the morning, dude. You got to get up earlier than that, dude. I am going to have to start getting up earlier. <laughs> What's sad is I, uh, my nephew came came by for a visit where he was just in and out, and uh, he even went too early wine to try to catch me, but uh, apparently missed me. Yeah, he, uh, he looked for me on the trail. That would have been weird. All of a sudden, just you being saw him, the nephew showed up. I saw him on my security cam. Oh, yeah. And he, he, he also left me a note to get a hold of him, which I did. And But he's halfway out the door and gone. So it, it didn't matter. Yeah. It didn't matter. I didn't want to, you know, me. It's like, uh, yeah. yes. We, yes. we've got we've had enough contact it's just good good to, good to see you on my security cam <laughs> yes. I, I even sent him a copy of it Did you, i saw you i don't get any ideas yeah yeah, yeah don't poke around too much <laughs> yeah i uh i i'm not quite there yet <laughs> what about be antisocial yeah yeah I'm, well uh, Yes, it, it's just it's just a thing. I am. I uh, I'll I'll respond and adapt as needed to uh, whatever comes my way. But with preference, uh, I'm just uh, like a low low interaction kind of guy. I can't help yes. it. Yes, nothing wrong with that. No, huh? Unless you need your your crew. You know, if I ever want to get a bunch of people to help me beat somebody up and say, here, here's your bat. We're going over there. I won't, I won't have that sort of social underpinnings to uh, my, uh, my sudden needs to have a, uh, my gang. You don't have a posse. I don't what have you're a saying. posse. Yes. I don't have a posse. And, uh, you know, when you, when that is known, you, you become, it's like my neighbor's. They know that. They know I don't have a posse, and they know they have one. They got me outnumbered, so I got to watch them. Keep my eyes open. All a guy, time. a guy at work was looking to buy a house not far from you. Oh, really? Tell him. Don't think about it. Well, well you know, the, his his dollar that he wants to spend is not very much. Okay. He's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he's, it might be a good thing, you know. Get yeah, lucky I'm, if he gets a. Uh, my situation where these guys are literally trying to acoustically uh, get rid of me. Now they've given that up. And I th used to think it was because I did my uh, crazy bit and uh, gave them some noise in the middle of the night too. But uh, 
I've decided since then that no, no, I remember now that I finally said, and I don't know why this didn't occur to me. Everybody else this is how everybody else in the world does it. I called the cops. I said, hey, look, these people are still going. And so that complaint, that is probably the one that brought them down, why they haven't been doing it as much and for as long. They would go till 2 a.m. playing loud music just as an acoustic kind of annoyance to, uh, you know, deep bass and all that. Oh, yeah. And it was... Uh, well, that's not that's not legal. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, exactly. It's uh, and uh, and that's the way I should have always played it instead of trying to say, "You bastards! I'm, I wish I had a posse. I didn't. You guys! I wish I could afford a PA speaker that uh, had that capability. I'd I'd let you have some Led Zeppelin all night long. You know, dude. Uh, <laughs> the, the, my uh, I guarantee you that Bose. Uh, bookshelf system i got i can turn it up and you can hear it in dave's living room <laughs> I oh my mean, god yeah it's uh it's way too powerful for my house at the volumes my wife allows me to listen to music at <laughs> oh she does She's, allow you to listen to it too loud or not no she does not i said oh, that's, that's good saying. it's too <laughs> loud for well what's how's that good just no, because just because uh i don't like loud intrusive music in my space Oh, so, well, I don't so think I'm you for can, that. I don't think you can hear it from your okay, house. No, I can't. It's not that. It's not that powerful. Uh, hey, I did a Blackhawk. How about that? You did do a Blackhawk. I saw that. That looks good. Thanks. And Maverick, Roy Huggins. That's the last thing he uh, noted. Wouldn't surprise me if he went to sleep. Dan, no, <laughs> no, I'm, no. I'm I've, I, I have had multiple phone conversations with Dan, and we had, uh, we had thirty views last time. Did we really? Yeah. The uh, Dan, I could, I could. Dan's one of those guys that, if you're on his wavelength, I think you can talk to him for a while. Yep. And he's, you know. What else? Uh, Which that's good. That's what he does. Is no, yeah, yeah. Talk, yeah, but he he writes. So I mean, that's kind of a speaking of writers. I, I just got done with a book called A Gollum in Paris, which was turning into a bit of a slog. I like the. It, it's a father and son team, which uh, reminds me of uh, you know, of course, uh, Stephen King and his kid uh, Hill, Joe Hill, and. Um, so, you know, it, it, it wasn't as good as it could be. And so what do I follow that with? Huck Finn. Oh, oh my, geez. My <laughs> God, that, that guy loves language. Mark Twain. Oh, it yeah. Is, it is so fun to listen to this. You know, whatever you might be against in the audio version, it's like, it's just such beautiful language. It doesn't matter. You know, if the acting's a little off or here or there. Oh, yeah. And it's not it's not terrible. I mean it's it's pretty good it's pretty good audio uh, narration. Yeah, I think Mark Twain was one of those guys that was at the right place. And I, I don't say like this like he got lucky, but he was just a guy that was right for his time. You know? Well yes, and he was going to go ahead and describe a little window that he lived that was going to bring it to life to for everybody, and yet that time went by instantly. I mean, yeah. there, there was no such thing as that lie just about the moment he uh, told you about it, you know? Oh, yeah. Trading, really trading messages on Facebook, and, uh, and I'm a talker. I take after my mom. My mom never went a day without being on the phone with about Ten people. Before my, her day. Like, my, mom, my mom's like that. Before her day was done. Yep. That's that's that's. It's more the way to be. I'm not saying that. I'm. Uh, antisocial. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, or that I'm right to be antisocial. I'm just antisocial because of uh, circumstances. 
Yeah, circumstances. I don't feel like I, mean, I can run with a pack anymore. I uh, and uh, you know Dick Miller talked about this, and I feel like Dick Miller. Um, he talked about your your best friend in life is Jack Nicholson. Practically, you you guys have got everything in common. You came up at the same time. Everything. And you uh, you went through the Roger Corman school of low budget stuff, and then all of a sudden, probably seemed kind of quick. Jack Nicholson can jump on a plane, be anywhere in the world, and uh, you just aren't going to be hanging with the guy. And it's like, well, that's life, you know. Yeah. You, can, you can't say, "Hey, Jack, you want to take me with you?" No, you can't. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fun. yeah. It does depend on what I'm talking about, and so a little bit of why I'm antisocial is just that. Hey, I've I've had my social moment with my little group and yeah. recreating it in a place that was just a a fallback position that kind of <laughs> traumatized me, and I'd been traumatized beforehand. God, for five or six years after I lost my last big job, just realizing I wasn't going to be able to reconnect with any of that or yeah, that, that be yeah. able to shovel it again or find anybody that let me shovel it in the same way. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, it ripped me up a little bit. And so it's mm, like, that, okay. I could, uh, I could see that. I could totally yeah. see that. I mean, I, so, you know, if something happened to my job, I would probably be the same way. I mean, different kind of situations. So obviously. it's like, you know, and I did things out of necessity, like go for that Avis job, which uh, put me in. And I did. Well, I think all the things I did tried to do when I I worked for uh, Home Depot. God, that was hell on earth. Avis was not hell on earth. I, I crafted that thing. But then I had people I hated to work with. And it's like, uh, and like I told you, that one psycho guy. He was, and he just happened to be my very immediate boss, you know. No god. And everybody hated him, and you know, it wasn't me. I wasn't me. Everybody. No, of course me. not. Of course, it, it wasn't you. No, it wasn't. Everybody, <laughs> everybody uh, had run-ins with him, and. Uh, Are you talking about the hotel or at Davis? Oh yeah, and I worked at that damn hotel. That guy was crazy. I'm still waiting for him to be identified as some serial killer someday. That guy was crazy. But, um, yeah, yeah, I had some rough times when I got back here. So it's like. I, when you came back and I, I, how long, how long had you been back before you joined the Oklahoma Comic Group? Do you remember? Oh, per, I, I wonder. It was pretty immediate because I was pretty depressed. I was just looking around for something to be doing you know because there was nothing here you know i was you know the alcoholic situation here the yeah the mother, the mother situation here where she was just so so unhappy because of her the son that you know she <laughs> if you had to get down to it the son she truly loved uh was such a um, such a uh, you know ongoing anguish to her you know well, I, I, you know, I mean, I don't think I ever met your mom, but I feel like sometimes parents, um, they can't help it. They can't help it. Well, we're, all, we're all built like that. We decide who is the, uh, most important to you. Well, I think the, uh, I know, well, but I think parents tend to, it, I mean, it, it, which seems crazy, but I think they tend to favor the more needy kids. Yes. Well, sure. The more self-sufficient kids. Kind of, I mean, I don't, and again, I don't, you know, I think that, uh, I think it's just a protective mode that some mm -hmm. parents kick in or whatever. Says mm -hmm. the guy with no kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to know exactly all that. But my mom was an un, you know, unending uh, source of support for these people that I wouldn't have been supportive of for. And I wasn't. That's the other thing. That's the other thing. I've got guilt from this damn place. I'm, I'm like I say, I've got very, very, real. Don't I have very few reasons to get together with anybody and talk about 
good times here in Oklahoma, basically. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I could, I could see that. I guess I could build them. Sure. I don't know. Sure. I could, I could get around and talk to some people that were worthwhile and like you, I told you, I was going to say, I, I, say, I told you the say. reason I, I uh, felt like I could be uh, friends with you where you were uh, probably a no drama kind of character that didn't, didn't have a lot of built in dramas and stuff. Nope. Like that. I, I, I have tried to exercise all drama for my life. I deal with dramas all day at work and yeah. I am the guy that calms everything down <laughs> and talks people off the ledge yeah. because I, in fact, in fact, for a while, I had a sign above my desk that I wrote that said, drama is bad for business. And mm -hmm. I firmly believe that. And I believe it's bad for, and it's, I think it's bad for productivity. Oh yeah. It's, it's bad for, I mean, and, and, and I'm talking about like, like in personal productivity too, you know, and fulfillment, life fulfillment. If you can, if you can exercise drama out of your life, you know, holy yeah. cow, you're, and, and I'm so fortunate because my, my wife is super mellow. Mm -hmm. I've got, I've got, I, I don't want to say I got everything figured out, but I've got so much stability in my life compared to so many people. Yes. That's, and, and I, that's I, what I, we all want. We want control stability I, well, as, much I don't, as, as much as we can get. You know? Yeah. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I have no illusion about, I have control. But I just know that, like, it's like there's no – I don't look for drama. I try not to cause drama. I try and nip it in the bud because I – you know, I just want to go to work. I want to I wanna do my job. I want to come home. I want to eat a little supper, draw some comics, mm -hmm. you know, draw, read. I mean, you know, one of my most enjoyable things in life that I do is – uh, is, you know, go downtown and walk around and doodle in my st stupid sketchbook and, mm -hmm. and, you know, just, just, uh, you know, just, gro just groove on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and it's like, Hey man, you know, and, uh, I enjoy drawing the comic. I, enjoy, I, even though Dan is, is giving me two more pages, I'm enjoying <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it, that's the, that, and so, uh, you know, re, I mean, I yeah. tell people, I tell people, you know, I'm at the age where people always talk to me about, you know, the, the I seem to be surrounded by people that want to retire, talk about retiring or whatever. And mm -hmm. I always tell them about, oh, I, I got a buddy that, you know, he gets up and he goes to the park and he walks and he comes home and he reads a draw, you know, he might eat some lunch. He might go shopping. He, you know, I kind of go through your routine as I understand it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and usually it depends if they're like, creative types they're usually like okay that's pre that sounds pretty cool that's you know if yeah. they're not they're, they're like oh my gosh that sounds horrible that's you know? that guy sounds awful yeah it's like yeah. but it's like well what do you what do you what is he not doing that you think he should be doing you know yeah i think it's the fact that you're not interacting you know it's the the solitude that mm -hmm. freaks people out or whatever yeah, I mean, uh, and some people forget it. You, you know, people are built like, uh, not built like me at all. Most people absolutely need to uh, yeah. have more than I've got as far as an interaction and, uh, and uh, stuff like that. It's like I'm not on Facebook. I have Instagram, and I've been getting a lot of dopamine from that lately. I've been posting there, and that's, that's cool. I went back to Twitter and I'm oh, not, gosh. I'm not getting any dopamine from there. I, I almost am not posting hardly at all. Every now and then I'll crack a joke here. I actually got a, about 10 reactions to my, uh, a little joke I cracked the other day, but you know, and that, and that could start you down the dopamine path. Right. I, yeah. I'm not going to do that. It's it, that was enough. I did it. This uh, rusty cage that built a guillotine. <laughs> It was funny because he built it because he wanted to build a guillotine, but he realized if I build a guillotine and I put it on YouTube, it will pay me money because people will follow it and I'll have X amount of people uh, that I can count on uh, following the progress on my guillotine. And by golly, it is it was fascinating to watch him build that thing. 
you know, all the problems he had to solve, how much money he had to, he get, he gave you, what do you call that uh, as a carpenter, your, your bill of materials or whatever. Oh yeah. He, he told you exactly how much it cost and all that. So he had, he had a thing and this guy was uh, playing an actor that was like the IRS or something like that, that was giving him some sort of big hassle about, his guillotine was telling him what the problems were going to be with it now that he owned it and how oh, much yeah. he, how much he was going to have to pay for it now considering so it's, it's worth tax. yeah oh yeah he increased the value of it <laughs> oh yeah 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 he was an inspector and i said you never tell and i didn't expect this to get a reaction i said i just made a comment I said, you never tell a man with a guillotine that he's not up to code yeah, and, the, and that line, <laughs> you know, it got it got several, you know, likes. Yes, I'm moving my page because I have a visitor, a strange oh, visitor uh, from another species. Shaggy. Yep. Hey, come here. Hey, You'll be on the team. Come here. She's bad. If you try and she'll she'll jump at you like she wants to jump in your lap. You want to get in my lap? Come on. Hey, uh, hey, Dan, uh, what is it that the Dutch did? I'm just kidding. He, he, um, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> she's, she's gotten to where she likes to grab my socks and run. I guess that teaches me to put them up. Yeah, my cat has a, has a one particular period in the day where it needs to have a good combing, a flea combing and all that. That's its uh, big affectionate moment with me. But it demands it, and it's very annoying because <laughs> I often don't want to have anything to do with her. But she demands it. Yeah, the dog. I woke up this morning to getting licked in the face. Oh boy! Which normally she doesn't lick. Normally, if I'm asleep, she'll leave me alone. But I was I was fast asleep. She's getting a haircut oh, yeah. tomorrow. That'll be interesting. That'll wake you up quick, won't it? Oops. Yes. Yes. The old tongue right in the face. Yep. Once you realize it's not your wife, you definitely wake up quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no way to sleep through that. Nope. Uh, well, we've been oh. at it an hour and two minutes. I feel like I shouldn't have uh, bared my soul so much, and uh, I'll go back and delete this segment. <laughs> delete the video? No, don't do no, that. No, I'm, I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, I you know I do need to follow through with that idea that I was I told you about. It's like uh, start downloading these things and just turn them into five minutes worth instead of an hour's worth. Uh, you know, every now and then we'll say something interesting and have uh, a couple things we'll show off or make reference to, and I could just use the soundtracks pretty often. It's like I've told you guys about all that material you've got is audio. You guys could turn all that into YouTubes. Just I by, know. Oh, just by adding pictures? Yeah, just by adding pictures to it. That's up to Dave. Yeah. We haven't recorded in two weeks. And we may not record tomorrow if, uh, if I'm working on a rocket ship for Bible school. Uh-oh. And yeah. he doesn't know that yet, though. But we'll <laughs> see. Anyway. Boy, have you been given any sort of assignment? To be ready no, with? No, no. You know, what we've done lately that I've enjoyed is we've been watching the old Planet of the Apes movies. Uh-huh. We watched the first first two. Well, so what happened is we were we were talking about them. He bought a book about the art of the Planet of the Apes. And we and it had a, it was an art book about, I think it was about, I don't remember, it may have been just the original movie. But anyway, I told him, I said, you know, I don't think I've seen all the movies. Uh I'm glad you like it, Dan. I got a lot done tonight. I was happy. Uh, I don't think I've seen all the movies. And he's like, oh, you can borrow. Anytime you want to watch them, you can borrow them. I got them all. And literally the next day I went and at a thrift store for $3, I bought a five pack of all the original Apes movies. $3. $3. Oh I was like, oh, my gosh. And uh, so I well, bought those are, them. Those are worthwhile just for Roddy McDowell. Well, and, and so this is right before we went on vacation. I downloaded, uh, I forget which one, one of the later ones. 
and watched it on a plane. Anyway, so I was talking to Dave about it. So we've been doing like our own classic cinema podcast where we watch it and then talk about it afterwards. We've done uh-huh. two of them. Uh, I don't know if he wants to do a third one. The problem is it, it's a long podcast and we need to probably do two if we record tomorrow. But we'll see. Ruby. Well, that's that's great. That's uh you guys get your have got have been getting your ex for some time on uh on that discipline. I I dig that that uh, oh my god, how many hours do you think you guys have logged on that? Okay, well, at least an hour a week. And our uh, our hour episodes hour are long too. Yeah. But anyway, it's it's what I do on Fridays generally, so you know, it works out okay. Yeah, yeah. No, and you guys are couldn't be situated better for it. You're across yeah, the street from yeah, each Dave, other. Dave lives across the street from me, so yeah. that works out pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, okay, are we done? Groovy, yeah, we are. And uh, hey, thanks, okay. thanks, Dan. It was great to have you on yeah, board. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, I enjoyed I I enjoy our conversations. We'll have to talk again soon. This weekend's shaping up to be busy, so I don't know, but we'll we'll talk again soon. And I'm trucking along, man. My goal is to make August 1st. I got, I'm a, four is about done. I'm halfway there and I've got two weeks. So I, I should, at this point, it should be a, a cruise maybe. I don't know. I don't want to count my chickens where they're hatched. Very cool. Because stuff comes up, but I think we're good. I'm going to get them to Kevin as soon as I can though. So that's quite a challenging shot. You got a top, a top down shot. Yes. I'm, you, you, I'm, you take I'm, that kind of stuff on. Yeah, I, I'm trying to really push myself mm-hmm. and not do the same shot, same yeah. side shot. Oh, you know what? I haven't, sh- before we go, I haven't showed you some of the pages I've done because I did oh, several. Let's have a look at them. I'll, I'll put you on uh, solo, okay. solo. Okay, have you seen this one? Let me see. Wait a second. I haven't seen it completely finished and fleshed out like that. Look at that. Sh- uh, push it up panel by panel. Okay, so. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's mm-hmm. see. So you got all that indicia and all that stuff. Yeah, I just got a little spot for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just because I always like that when they break up. Is that up the how you pronounce page. it? <laughs> I believe so. Okay, okay, so here's page here's page oh, two. Yeah, look at that. You, you these are uh these are great, Scott. Very yeah. cool. Tomorrow I've tried girl. To- I've tried to change the angle up. Oh, let's see. Sorry. I'm going the wrong way with it. Well, it's always, you know, it's always impact stuff. Uh, you know, if it, it's it's tough to, uh, you know, get that right. Looking good. Kevin will start coloring and lettering next week, says Dan. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I just want to get the make the deadline, and hopefully we'll get in the book. You know, very cool. Okay, we're anyway. ending the broadcast. That was, that was really neat. I like the fact that you did most of that work while <laughs> I saw you doing it. Okay, yeah. we'll see you. See you later. See you. Thanks, okay. Dan.